Hey boys and girls, it's your good buddy Dave from Car Speed. Thank you for clicking on the fourth video in the gearing topic, or the topic of gears, I should say. And in this video, we're going to talk about being gear bound, um, how to detect it, and uh, what to look for. So check it out. So in the first few videos, we talked about um, you know changing gears and and what that does and gear ratio and how that affects the go kart. <coughs> And we also talked about different gearing combinations. Well, in this video, we're going to concentrate more on the concept of being gear bound. Um, being gear bound, it sometimes is very hard to detect. Um, most people think that, oh, well, I'll know if I'm gear bound because I'll just turn a whole lot more RPMs than I want to. And sometimes if your tires are right, uh, because tires do affect your RPM output, um, that can be the case. However, also, it also can be where, you know, because we're low horsepower racing, sometimes we don't have enough horsepower just to pull through the limitations of the gear, and that will limit your overall RPM. So uh, that that's not the case with, like, UAS or Opens because they have enough horsepower. They, they put the wrong gear on it. It just keeps pulling regardless but not in clone or in plate racing. Um, so one way we can detect if we're gear bound um, is listen to the driver. You can, you know, if the driver says it's not pulling down the straightaway or it feels like it's, you know, running out and it just kind of it is the, the sound of the engine is not what it's supposed to be. Another way is to um, download your data from your Micron and look at it on the computer. Uh, so what we're looking at here at the graph is the RPM reading from the engine over one lap. All the way to your left here is the start and finish line, and that's the first part of the front straightaway. The green here is turns one and two. The blue here is the back straightaway. The red here is turns three and four. And this little blue sliver here is the second half of the front straightaway coming back to the start and finish line. And as you can see, coming down the back straightaway here, the, the RPMs really flatten out and plateau really bad. Let's check, see how much here. So let's, let's turn on this right here and let's measure it real quick Oops. come on now if I can get the computer to work yep there we go all right so over the the first half of the front straightaway um, he Jack this is this this is data from from Jack's go kart my son he turned 158 rpms okay from coming out the turn uh, about halfway, a little bit more than halfway down the straightaway, he, he gained 158 RPMs. That's over a span of 202 foot. All right, so let's turn it off. And let's, let's check it from here. Now, um, from the end, from that point to uh, the start of going into turn three, he only gained 30 RPMs, uh, and that's over a span of 100 foot. So, in a 150-foot span, he gained right at uh, 158 or so RPMs, and then in the next 100 foot of the straightaway, he only gained 30 RPMs. That is being gear-bound, okay, because the engine quits pulling. Well, I know you're thinking, well, Dave, well, you know, you probably showed, you know, too much max RPMs. Well, our max RPMs that we tried to turn, in this case, we were Junior 2 at the time, was anywhere between 5,800 RPMs and 6,000 RPMs. And as you can see, his max RPM was 5,801. So our max RPM was at the bottom window of what we want for our Junior 2 engines, and yet he still was plateauing and flattening out, and he was gear bound. In this situation, we actually dropped two teeth, and he picked up about two and a half to three tenths on the stopwatch in the first race. So. <laughs> Are you sure? I'm positive. How could you be so sure? So, <clears throat> I know what you're thinking. Well, David, you showed us what a bad RPM trace looked like. What does a good RPM trace look like? Okay, so, <clears throat> again, 
What you want the, the RPM trace to do is you want it to pull down, you, or what you want your RPMs to do is you want it to pull down to the minimum. As soon as you hit the minimum RPM, you want the engine to start pulling. And you want that engine to continue pulling until the go-kart goes back down into to the turn um, and where it starts needing to slow down. So down the whole straightaway, you want that, that engine to continue to build RPMs and build RPMs and build speed. So what you're looking at now is another RPM trace, okay, of one lap. And as you see here, the, this one, because it's in Race Studio 3 analysis, is labeled. It's the front straightaway, turns one, turns two, back straightaway, turns three, turn four, and the front straightaway. And as you, this trace is as about as perfect as you can get, because as you can see, it pulls down to the minimum RPM, and then it keeps pulling down the whole back straightaway until it gets to the turn to slow down again. And again, this is how you want the engine to do. This, this go-kart is not gear-bound at all. The first go-kart, Jack's go-kart, you, you, you could tell um, that it's gear-bound. It flattened out. It plateaued down the, the back straightaway. But not in this situation. In this situation, the go-kart continues to pull, continues to pull, continues to pull. Okay? And as you can tell, I know what you're thinking. Well, oh, well, David, this is because it's a clone engine. That doesn't really happen in plate. Boy, as you can see, this is a plate engine. This is an actually a, a, a green plate Junior 1 engine. And we try to keep our Junior 1s between 54 and 5600. And as you can see, the max RPM for him is 5564. So this RPM trace is about as perfect as you can get. Well, guys, I appreciate you joining me for this video. I tried to keep it as brief as I could. Um, I appreciate you uh, coming in and watching. And uh, remember, you know, race is tough. Don't be leaving no speed in the trailer. <laughs>